Hey, this is Joe at Gray Bench Electronics. Welcome back to the Pedal Teardown Series where I take apart new and interesting pedals and show you what's going on inside. Today, we have the Blackstone Appliances MOSFET Overdrive. All right, Blackstone Appliances MOSFET Overdrive. So it's in this 1590B size enclosure, sort of a speckled or you know heavily sandblasted outer texture to it. All black, sort of a, a matte or maybe satin finished black. Two foot switches here, latching type. Nice little metal placard here. Blackstone Appliances, MOSFET Overdrive. Gives the model number 2SV3, New York, New York. The potentiometers here aren't like standard knob potentiometers. They're these little inset metal pieces and you're meant to turn these by either a fingernail or a guitar pick, like so. Seems to work fine. I think the intention behind this is that you are less likely to fiddle and more likely to just set something in play and deal with it. I guess this would technically be top mounted jacks, input and output, nine volt power, standard 2.1 millimeter DC jack there. Back panel, this one was a used pedal so it does have some Velcro on it which is fine. Rubber feet as well. Let's crack open the pedal. All right, so here is the PCB for the Blackstone Appliances MOSFET Overdrive. So the input and output jacks are on their own little daughter board here with a couple wires joining to the main board. And they're just PCB mounted to this little board. The jacks appear to be JT brand, not familiar with that. We've got a little bicolor LED sticking out from the board here. And that was just poking through this uh, top hole on the enclosure. Uh, and that matches up with the two channels, red and brown where red is just a single red color through this LED, and then I believe the LED is red and orange. When you put red and orange together, it looks brown. The foot switches are also PCB mounted, and they are marked Click brand, K-L-I-K. The potentiometers are the little nine millimeter alpha style potentiometers. The values are, so red drive and brown drive are both 500K linear. Whatever this potentiometer is, this one isn't marked. It is a linear 50K. The red level is linear 50K, and the brown level is linear 50K as well. The little knobs appear to be just metal caps that are placed over the potentiometers. They don't come off easily, so I'm assuming they're glued or adhered somehow. I'm not going to force it. Back side of the board, we have the Blackstone Appliances website, model number 2SV3.3, which is the most recent version. Two of the capacitors here are socketed, which means if you wanted to, you could change the value of these capacitors. The values that are currently installed is a one microfarad there and a 330 picofarad capacitor there. Little switch on the side here. One way says react, like reactive, and one way says buffered. So this is probably switching in and out an input buffer. There is a notice on the placard here, requires unbuffered connection to the guitar. So that would be probably to use with the reactive mode. And then if you have to have it behind other pedals, then you would put it on buffered mode. One of the more interesting features of this pedal is this little block here. It's actually on header pins. So you can see here it's a little block of epoxy and it's got eight header pins that connect to header sockets on the board. Underneath are a couple of trim pots. They are labeled VR6 and VR7. Uh, this is going to be a protection measure. Uh, to either protect sensitive components or to protect the design of the circuit for from copying. Uh, unfortunately, sometimes gooping, which is what this practice is generally referred to, using some kind of epoxy or goop to protect or hide components on the board. Gooping can sometimes be used for nefarious uh, means to hide that you've stolen a circuit from somebody else. As far as I understand for this circuit, what's hidden in here is a, uh, a hex inverter. Uh, so a similar chip that you would find on like a Red Llama or Craig Anderton's tube sound fuzz and also an op amp. And that block just connects back into the PCB with those header pins like so. And then inside the enclosure, there's a little piece of foam, sort of like weather stripping or, or adhesive foam in there to keep the block from unseating itself. 
Another little piece of foam for where the battery sits. Inside is a tag, it says MOSFET Overdrive, Model 2S53, 2SV3, serial number is T10, T1101, Blackstone Appliances, New York, New York. Component-wise, we have mostly carbon film resistors and film capacitors. There are a couple electrolytic capacitors as well. PCB mounted DC jack. Solder job looks good, very consistent. All right, so that is the PCB of the Blackstone Appliances MOSFET Overdrive. Let's put the pedal back together. All right, so that's it for the teardown on the Blackstone Appliances MOSFET Overdrive. If you have any questions or have a recommendation for a pedal you want to see on a future teardown episode, let me know in the comments. As always, the pedals featured on the teardown series are available for sale. If you want to support the channel, head down to the description. You will find a reverb link there for the pedal. Uh, if you enjoyed the video, I'd appreciate hitting the like button and subscribing and hit the notification bell if you want to know when I make a new video. I'm Joe from Gray Bench Electronics. Thank you for watching.